Hi everyone, Jamie here, sunny Arizona, enjoying this cool weather we're having. So are the plants. I'd like to say this is almost perfect weather. We don't get it that often. Now last week we had a lot of rain come through, which was great. Provided us with an inch and a half over five day period. Nice slow drizzle. So everything soaked in, didn't really have no watering. What's happened? Seeds are coming up everywhere. Now, to be honest, I have no clue what these seeds are, but they're seeds and they're plants and their stuff going into the system. So it's a good thing. Well, this one I do know, that's common mallow. And as they get older, I'll know what it is a little more. I see some daikons coming up. Outstanding. I was kind of worried that I might have lost my daikons this year. Um. Because we didn't have much rain last year. And um, only set a few. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's good. Um, show you these pits out here. And how remarkable the growth is. Um, now granted they're what you would call weeds. But they're still growth. Um. I don't believe in weeds. <laughs> They're here to do a job. Um, people have told me that. Jeff Lawton says it. And I'll let them do their job. So let's go take a look at a couple of them. I spotted this on the way out. All that grass growing. And coming up. Seeds caught in the rocks. What you want to happen, at least in my case. And here's another example of areas that caught water and it stayed there. Grass is coming up. Now, I had someone ask me, um, Steve asked, How did the moisture behind our sediment behind the rock dams work and it worked great this one caught some the real winner of the catch mat contest was the second one that's a lot of material that's not leaving my land and building up back here so that worked pretty good um, I'll show you some more examples here's another example of that this is an area that washes down pretty good you got a series of one rock dams going up the hill and down here at the bottom that's what we're left with the sediment catching stopping the erosion Okay, now we're out here in the Arizona Smiles. <laughs> uh, Demi Loons or Half Moons, whatever you call it. And you can see the life's doing good. We have grasses coming up in clumps on the mounds. Let me try to get this where you can see it better. But filling in with life. And that's good. I'll show you this guy. The Sahara mustard. And it's got to be one of the biggest I've ever seen. Um, let's see. I wear a size 10. That's pretty big. Now, I watch another channel, and he eats these. Um, I've looked it up. At first, 
the stuff I'd read said it wasn't edible. Now I'm reading that it is edible, often used in couscous after it's dry. So I'm curious. What's your thoughts on it? Another one in the mounds, but... A dung beetle looking for some dung. There's some over there, buddy. I, um, I watched this one channel, and they said if you don't have dung beetles on your, your land, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> so, I'm doing something right, I think. I've got a lot of them. But let's continue. Down here towards the front. And the mulched out bed. Somehow those mustards are finding their way through it. Everything's growing around it. So, I'm pretty happy. Now we're back to the front. I've decided to call this area my Greening the Desert Project. Because everything here is meant to be able to last. With the exception of a few things. Um, naturally, the orange tree wouldn't survive without my intervention. Um, probably not the figs. Um, a couple of the cactuses, maybe. But I believe everything else in here, that if I just left it alone and disappeared, it would continue to grow. And eventually spread, I think. Now, I had someone tell me on the comment one time that my spot here was too small to make any kind of impact on the desert. And overall, I would agree. I mean, it's two and a half acres. I'm not going to take care of California's Mojave Desert. But this little corner here can easily spread seeds. <coughs> Birds can come in here and eat the, the fruits, spread more seeds. And before you know it, we've got mesquite trees out here again. And we have Palo Verdes out here again. And we have all the things that was here at one point. But have slowly kind of faded away. It's odd that, you know, you can go 30 miles to the northeast and you run into all kinds of trees out there. But down here in the Yucca Valley, we have barely any trees. And the ones that we have are the uh, Joshua trees. And unfortunately, what we've seen this year is about I'd say 70% of our Joshua trees in this valley died. Um, three years, no rain, very little rain. I think we topped out at four inches during that time period. And so it's just too much for them. And most of them end up on the ground, which is unfortunate. Because we're like in a valley where we're fortunate enough to have both the Joshua tree and the Socorro. Um, each one are usually limited to the desert they're in, the Sonoran and the Mojave. But here, we get a mixture. So, that's nice. Hate to see that diversity go. Small clip of our rain gauge. That's what we've gotten. I'm coming into the main garden. Pandas are doing well. Looks like the vine's going to be fine. Hopefully next year it takes over a little more. These cannas. One of my favorite to look at. Mexican Matunia. Looks so good. And then it's Pink Cousin. I love those flowers. Okay, here in the wannabe food forest. Getting closer to being a real food forest. But, finished my project of moving the path over. Expanding this bed. The rain really helped. Still getting more tomatoes. Even getting eggplant flowers. But... Doing well, 
and I decided I'm not gonna um, cover it back up with straw this this winter I want to see what seeds pop up and I've shred a lot over the years in here and we've got little things popping up and I'm expecting even more to come up pretty soon and candles are doing good which brings me to a subject I was I watch another channel that's here in the Mojave Desert and he recently planted a eucalyptus tree and someone got on to him about you know trying to grow tropicals in a desert environment and why don't we just try to jungle the just being a real smart ass a racist smart ass at that and I stepped in and said you know I don't see nothing wrong with growing tropicals out here if you can do it if it makes you happy grow it I mean why do you got to be a purist now I know that again without my intervention the majority of everything you see in here will die it needs to be watered and we just don't get enough water to support it now eventually maybe the trees live I know the mesquites will pretty sure that giant Peruvian apple over there and the prickly pear as well but I don't know about the rest now if we get the rainfall that we had this year so far we're over nine inches approaching ten inches the most rain we've ever seen and who knows maybe it will maybe it won't we have grass coming up all over the place from the straw we spread which again I'll say is a good thing I'm not gonna complain about it artichokes are coming back that's being a cat silly boy over here we started separating more we got these three clumps today and these are big um, three gallon pots and I still have over half of it left in here so I'm gonna probably end up taking another four maybe five out of here and leaving a center right there alone again seedlings coming up everywhere I mean everywhere really wish I could tell you well this is that and this is that like I said it's been years of seed spreading in here um, I'm hoping some daikons come up this year we used to have a whole lot come up and then we covered and nothing came up so that's where we're at here See if I can get a shot of those mountains for you. Sunset. But with that, folks, I'd like to wish you a, a happy week. And be kind to one another. The world needs more kindness. Maybe if we all got together and just be kind to one another in the comment section, who knows? might start a phase but anyway thank you for joining us and talk to you later okay I'm back <laughs> sorry false ending I want to say thank you to everyone who showed encouragement to this non-smoking I'm now over three weeks hadn't smoked a cigarette since then cravings are going away um, mm -hmm. so I think I'm, I, I beat it I think I, I want to thank you guys for the encouragement. It was really special. Thank you.